Hold on. Hey guys, it's Jasmine and that was Puppy and Alfred. And in today's video, I'm going to share a little kind of surprise trick that I learned on how to brush your cat if your cat does not like being brushed. If you're new here, I have two feline fur babies. One is Puppy and he's the OG and I've had him for quite a few years and just actually a little bit over a year ago, I adopted him a twin, but not actually twin brother, who is Alfred. And Alfred, even though they look super duper alike, he has kind of a fluffier undercoat happening, which means that he really, really needs to be brushed somewhat often because both of them shed in their own right. But Alfred, he sheds those little fluffy hairs all over the place. And so I'm luckily pretty diligent about cleaning, but it doesn't matter. It still gets annoying, especially if you like to wear black. And I mean, if you don't like being woken up to the music of hairballs being coughed up in the middle of the night, which I don't even know why they're called hairballs. I, I think they're more like kind of like hair hot dogs or something. And when it comes to puppy, I think once or maybe twice ever I've experienced him coughing up a hair hot dog. But for Alfred, if I don't manage to brush him at least two or three times a week, if not every other day, as best as I could before learning this trick, I could expect to wake up at least two or three or four nights a week to a freshly heaved hair hot dog. Luckily, around the same area each time, bless his heart. It, it wasn't like a surprise where I happened to step on it barefoot all of a sudden and be like, what was that? But since incorporating this little trickery of brushing him, not even once, but twice a day, there haven't been any hairballs. And that's also considering that Alfred really likes cleaning and licking and bathing his brother. Oh, and for any of you wondering, because I have been asked about how the raw cat food diet could affect hairballs or hair hot dogs, I guess now they're officially called. I will have a video about that coming up because it does unsurprisingly lend improvement to that because it is so beneficial overall. And before I get into telling you my cat brushing trick, if you are new here, welcome. I put out a new video every catter day and usually sprinkled in throughout the week and they can include things about cat stuff like this, especially having to do with feline nutrition or raw cat food, as well as cute kitty videos of Puppy and Alfred on their never ending battles. And of course, things for humans like workouts and recipes and stress management tips and honestly, whatever else I feel like posting. So if you'd like to get notified whenever new videos go up and join us in the Cat Lady Fitness family, then yeah, make sure to subscribe and also click that little bell icon so that you can actually get notified whenever new videos go up. All right, so back to Puppy and Alfred and the fact that Alfred hates being brushed when he's the one that actually really, really needs it. When I do try to brush him, he gets a little bit sassy. His tolerance is quite low. Ow. Alfred, ouch, that was not nice. He cannot lay there, he can't just take it, he can't just understand I'm trying to do it for the better good of his hairball hot dog spit ups in the middle of the night. And then what usually happens is puppy realizes I have a brush in my hand and he'll come over and I'll end up brushing puppy every time I'm supposed to brush Alfred. I don't know if any of you can relate with this. If you can, please tell me in the comments below because I still, I think it's so endearing and fascinating how two cats, I mean, even despite them looking almost exactly alike, how their actual personalities can be so incredibly different. Anyway, so I'm sure you guys were like, okay, story time, great, but tell me, how did you get Alfred to be okay with being brushed twice a day. And this is what I did. As many of you know, Puppy and Alfred have two meals a day. They eat their raw cat food and they get a breakfast and they get a dinner. So honestly, it just popped in my head one morning a couple of weeks ago that I noticed, you know, whenever I feed Puppy, who he eats first because he is like the dominant cat and the first cat of the household, 
And I like to honor that. And whenever I put Puppy's plate down, I've always given him a little pet and a little zhuzh like up his back and a little butt slap or whatever. And so I realized, why, why don't I do this with Alfred too? He's always very excited to get his meals. And whether it's by the distraction of him being so excited to eat or the association that being pet a certain way is a good sign because it's associated with mealtimes, I decided to put this into practice with Alfred. And so when I gave Alfred either his breakfast or his dinner, I would put his food down. You hungry? You hungry? As for that bell, I'll, I'll probably talk about that in a video coming up at some point, but I, I'm, you know, doing this little bell training experiment with them. But every time I'd put Alfred's food down, I would make sure to give him a little bit of roughhousing kind of petting and zhuzhing up his back, just like I do with Puppy. Initially, my goal with this was simply to get him more accustomed to being comfortable being pet that way and to get him kind of less skittish and less skeptical when he was being pet, especially near his butt and his tail, because that was always the area where Alfred, I mean, I don't know if something happened to him before he came into our life and this family and this house. So my initial reason for starting to do this wasn't for brushing, but it was just to get him used to being pet this way. So every day I would do this with him, put down his breakfast plate, zhuzh up his back, kind of scratch near his tail. Same thing at dinner, put down his plate, pet him kind of a little rougher. And each time I would go a little bit longer, maybe for, you know, the first time it was maybe five or 10 seconds, just a quick little thing. And then I led up to standing there a little bit longer as he started to eat and was petting him like that for, you know, 30 seconds or close to a minute. And then probably about a week later, I was outside brushing puppy and it was like a light bulb went off. Why don't I try brushing Alfred when he eats? Because I've kind of warmed him up to getting touched a little more anyway. And He's so into his food. And weird thing about Alfred, tell me if your cat does this too, but anytime I do pick him up or hold him like a baby or, you know, give him that attention, as soon as I put him down, if there's food on his plate, it's almost like it revs him up to go finish eating. So something about the comfort or energy, I don't know. It's the strangest thing, but he kind of has this hunger response in a way after receiving affection super interesting. So the next day I put this into action. This is my favorite thing in the world. I actually have it right here. It's the Furminator. I think this is a bigger size. Um, you can get it from stores and everything. It's the least expensive off Amazon, unsurprisingly. So I'll make sure to link it below. But this thing, especially for Alfred's type of hair with that fluffy undercoat, really gets all of the good stuff. And it also has this button that you press to kind of release the hair once you brush it off. So I took Alfred his food and I put it down and started brushing him. And he didn't fight me off. He didn't get all skittish. He was just focused on eating his breakfast. And I did it again at dinner. And I did it again the next day. And I realized that even if I'm brushing him just maybe 10 strokes for less than a minute while he's eating, it makes the biggest difference. And he seems like he really couldn't care any less. He has more important indulgent things to tend to. So this is my trick, basically. It doesn't take any time out of your day. And we've been doing this now. I do it at least, you know, at breakfast, usually at breakfast and dinner, because it just takes maybe 30 seconds to give him that brushing while he's eating. And even though he still obsessively cleans his brother and himself, there have been no surprise hairball hot dogs since I started doing this. So yeah, that is how I managed this kind of sneaky trickery to get my cat who hates being brushed okay with being brushed. And now that I think about it, since I've been doing this, I haven't actually tried to brush him outside of, of that context of when he's eating. So if I can do that before I uh, post this video and see if he just tolerates being brushed better in general now, I'm, I'm going to post that clip right in here. But 
it's just like when you're eating. He's actually tolerating it. Much better. Holy moly. But there's his brother. Oh. Comfort cleaning. This is a huge difference. Wow, your tolerance though. And then he goes to his brother for comfort. All right guys, I hope you found this video interesting or helpful. And if you did, please make sure to click that thumbs up below and also leave me a comment below telling me if you have a puppy type cat who loves and begs for the brushings or if you have someone like Alfred who you kind of have to like, it's like a little kid that you have to like sneak vegetables into their food without them knowing. And I'm not about to forget the meow out of the week. I feel like I haven't done it in a minute. Uh, this time, honestly, it's going to all of you guys who always leave comments and click, click the thumbs up on any videos that I happen to post, whether they be of Puppy and Alfred, Bunny kicking it out, or stress management and tapping Tuesdays, or random videos like this, or fragrance reviews or whatever it is. I know a lot of us are sitting at home right now waiting for the current events and madness to pass a little bit. I just want to say thank you and send big, big hugs. And the boys send huge slow blinks, the slowest, slowest slow blinks to you guys and that we appreciate you and you all get the meow out of the week. All that being said, as always, I thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope that this video helps some of you out there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.